Hi everyone, Barbara Rankin here today, and I have a quick and easy Halloween candle for you to make, whether just for fun or for your home decor. Since I found these at my local dollar store, you can make lots of them for your holiday decorating or gift giving. They would also make nice party favors for your guests to take home. So first, let's start taking it apart. The label says it is a color-changing, battery-operated LED candle. So let's remove the labels first and the plastic bit that's keeping the battery from running down. When I turn the candle on, you can see that there is a single light on top, but the light inside changes colors. This is perfect for Halloween. Now let's remove the plastic holding the top and bottom of the candle together. I am using a sharp craft knife and I'm also using my heat tool to gently and carefully heat the, the glue holding it together. Please be very careful using these tools. Never point the sharp side of the knife towards you and keep your hands and fingers out of the way. Also keep the heat tool moving and gently heat the glue without burning or melting the plastic. Next, measure the plastic piece you just removed. It measures three and three quarter inches tall and nine inches long, but I'm adding an extra quarter inch for overlap. I chose this cute trick-or-treaters border piece from Gypsy Soul to use for my first candle. Use a craft knife to cut through the little chad pieces holding the laser cut border to the rest of the chipboard. Once you cut through, the piece will fall out easily. I was inspired by my teammate, Nicola Batalana, to make these candles. You may recall she made those beautiful fairy jars a while back. Next, I painted the chipboard with black acrylic paint. I used the Adirondack pitch black paint I had in a dabber bottle, but any black acrylic paint will work. If you are going to make several of these, go ahead and paint all your chipboard pieces with the black paint and let them dry. So I'll go ahead and paint the Gypsy Soul rickety fence with Cat's chipboard with the same black paint and I'll set this aside to dry. Use your craft knife to cut through the chads to release the shape easily. I've chosen two small shapes, Boo and a Flying Witch, from the Gypsy Soul Spooky Shape Set, which as you can see contains a lot of shapes. While I'm at it, I'll go ahead and paint these and set them aside to dry. Now let's put it back together. The first thing I did was cut a piece of 48 pound translucent parchment paper to the same size as the acetate piece I removed from the candle. It measured three and three quarters inches tall and nine and a quarter inches long, which includes a one quarter inch overlap. You could also use a piece of clear plastic or acetate if you don't have parchment paper. Or if you are able to remove the plastic from the candle without damaging it, you could also reuse that as well. You should be able to find any of these in your local craft store or online. So for my first candle, I used a rickety fence punch to make a fence border from gray paper. I will be able to use this to ground my trick-or-treaters and disguise any glue that may show through the parchment paper when I attach it to the plastic candle parts. When gluing things to parchment paper, it is very important to use a dry adhesive rather than liquid glues. The parchment will often buckle and look like a mess, and the glue will be seen through the paper. Therefore, you can either use double-sided tape sheets, such as this, or if you have a Xyron machine, you can then run all your pieces through it for attaching. When adding glue to the painted chipboard pieces, you will, however, want to run them through the Xyron with the painted side facing down, so the glue will be adhered to the painted side. Because the painted side will be adhered to the back of the parchment paper facing outward. 
So you, you will see what I mean in a minute. I highly recommend that when you use your Xyron machine, you use a bone folder to burnish the, the adhesive to both sides of the paper as well as the chipboard before removing that cellophane, clear cellophane cover. For my second candle, I used this small grass punch with green paper and made several pieces of grass to adhere to the bottom of the fence. This time I ran my red liner tape around the edges of the parchment paper before I ran it through the Xyron. I think this made it a little easier. You just want to be sure you get that red liner tape on before you add the glitter. Once again, I'm going to burnish that adhesive really well to the back of my paper. And much to my surprise, the adhesive did not stick to the plastic red liner. Next, I removed the parchment paper from the Xyron release paper, being careful not to touch the adhesive as it will show fingerprints. With the sticky side up, I carefully laid the chipboard face down. Turn the parchment back over onto the release paper and burnish the chipboard really well with your bone folder. With the sticky side up again, pour clear distress glitter over the remaining adhesive. I like to use a coffee filter to catch the excess glitter because they are static free and the glitter releases easily back into the jar. Now we are ready to put the candle back together. Remove the red liner from the bottom piece of tape and wrap the parchment around the bottom of the candle. Repeat for the top of the candle, but first get the red liner started along the side edge to make it easy to get to after you have attached both top and bottom pieces, and then you can simply press the side edge together. Now I simply glued the grass pieces along the bottom edge, overlapping each piece as I went. I had already cut a one quarter inch strip of the green paper and applied a piece of red liner tape to the back. So all that was left to, was to wrap it around the top portion of the candle. After I glued the paper strip down, it dawned on me that I had some Halloween ribbon somewhere in my stash. And when I found this trick or treat ribbon, it was perfect for my trick or treaters candle. So I simply glued it over the green paper strip. Then I found this orange and black striped ribbon and used that on the second candle and tied a bow. I was going to use this punched fence paper on one of the candles, but as it turns out, I didn't need it at all. So I will simply use it on a card or another project. It won't go to waste. So here they are all finished and ready to set out for display. But don't go away, I have a few close-up photos to share and let you see how cool they look when lit up. I love the changing colors, especially for Halloween. So I hope you enjoyed my quick, easy, and inexpensive project today, and that maybe you will want to make some of these for your festivities this Halloween. As always, thanks so much for watching, and if you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up, and I would love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel so you will get to see more of my projects. Have a great day, and always take time to play.